live their life um, based off what their religion tells them, and that was shocking. So is there any circumstance, like let's say that um, there was some type of fighting going on in, in a city, would that uh, thwart or stop their... Uh, they're they're praying or or something like uh, Ramadan. Would that yeah, be affected by it or exactly? And Ramadan is a good point. Um, during the time of Ramadan, they're not allowed to eat. Or the the ones who are truly religious, not all of them did this, but I'd say most of them did. Um, they didn't eat or drink during the day. So uh, when Ramadan came around, as far as the violence against American forces really decreased. Uh, especially during the day, because it, if I remember right, it was September, October time frame when Ramadan took place, and uh, we knew we could go out in the day and we wouldn't see a lot of people. Because I mean, think about it. You know, in September, October around here, if if you're not allowed to eat or drink, do you want to be hanging out during the day and doing a lot of physical activity? So um, it it did subdue it. Now, right after Ramadan ended, there was a significant increase in the amount of violence that took place, but. While Ramadan was going on, it, it dropped. And uh, what what's the what's the general climate like there? What what would you see, and how does it feel in in, um, in most of the places? I know you spend all of your time in Iraq, but but generally that's the same climate. What is it like there? Stepping off the airplane, what what do you see and feel? Well, we actually stepped off the airplane in Kuwait, um, so we were in Kuwait for uh, quite a while. Uh, we uh, we flew helicopters into Iraq, uh, specifically into Baghdad. But um, you know, we went from a U.S. post to U.S. post. So once we stepped off, I didn't notice a huge change. I mean, it was um, it was different, and the environment was different. But I was around a bunch of uh, uh, a bunch of Americans that I understood and, and we could relate to. It wasn't until I started going off the base and interacting with the Iraqis, that was the big surprise. And, and that was, like I'd said before, that their, their religion dominates everything. Can you tell us about the environment then some? Maybe about, you know, like here in the summertime we dress lightly uh, because it's hot here, because of, you know, our geography where we live. How, how, how do the people cope or uh, adapt to their environment based on how it feels there most of the time? Um, the summers are significantly hotter, but there's not a lot of humidity, so it's like a dry heat. Uh, there were times it got into the 120s uh, in the middle of the summer, uh, and they adapt to that. I mean, they're, they're, they're desert dwellers. They've, they've been there a long time. They've lived there. They know the environment. So when summer rolls around and it starts to get that hot, there's also a lot of limited activity. You'll start to see, um, uh, you know, the government will literally shut down for a month in August. Um, and in, in August, it's tough to get a lot of stuff done, if anything done, um, with the Iraqi people. Um, and <clears throat> things do slow down. Now, the winters, the winters are not much different than what they are here. It's still dry, but it gets cold. It gets cold a lot, but then there's also days when it's not as cold. It's more mild. So the winters are comparable to here. The summers are a lot hotter, uh, with the exception of there's no humidity. So there's no water in the air. You don't sweat as much. So back towards um, back towards the war. Um, in your opinion, and uh, what facts could you give us that we are we winning the war on terrorism? Yeah, I, th I think we are. Um, it's a long war, and it, it's kind of like the war on drugs. It's just something that's going to be ongoing. Um, but I think we've made a huge dent in it, not only with um, with the. Uh, commitments of our soldiers in Iraq and Afghanistan, but um, our law enforcement here in the states preventing um, terrorist actions from happening. I think our intelligence collection has gotten a lot better um, in our experience dealing with um, extreme Islamic groups has an increase to the point where uh, it's. I think it's tough for them to sneak snuff by us now. So, in your opinion, or is it the correct thing or the best thing for us to be in the Middle East? Or do you think that that our resources and our soldiers' time would be better spent here? No, I, I think we're always going to need some kind of small element. Maybe not the size that we have now. It, it probably can go down, but I think we're always going to need um, what I refer to as a QRF or a quick reaction force over in the Middle East. 
um, a small unit that if something were to happen, we can quickly react to. Because the whole goal is to prevent um, bad things from happening here in America. And in order for us to do that, we might need um, a small group of uh, soldiers or Marines or sailors or, or whatever it is stationed in the Middle East permanently. So, yeah. Now, before our, the United States troop were, were in the Middle East, um, can you explain uh, how, how terrorist camps uh, were set up and how us being over there affects their stability and and they're being comfortable and being able to plan things, attacks on things like uh, September 11th or other attacks on government buildings like the Pentagon. Well, we made it a lot harder for them because, uh, you know, before we had a permanent presence over there, um, we had a, they had a lot more free reign. So they didn't have to hide what they were doing. They could literally do uh, or plan their uh, terrorist operations almost openly. Um, but since we've been over there, they can't do it openly anymore. They have to be real covert about it. And, and even with that, you know, if we catch wind of where they are or who they are, um, we can easily go pick them up um, and arrest them. So uh, I, I think it's, it's made it a lot harder for them to plan terrorist activity. Now, is everyone in the Middle East a terrorist? I mean, no, no, no. I mean, what percent of the population there are, are affiliated or agree with the terrorists, do you think? That's a good question. I'd say less than 1% um, believe in terrorism. Because um, Islam itself, people say the religion of Islam is a, uh, it promotes terrorism. No, it doesn't. Um, a lot of good people um, uh, practice Islam. And a lot of peaceful people. There's no religion in the world that promotes violence, period. Now, um, we have, so these terrorists I'm talking about, they have extreme views of their religion. Not much different than Christians. There are a few Christians who have extreme views of Christianity, uh, Christianity or are willing to use violence to support their views. Uh, it's the same thing across all religions. It just so happens. Um, it just so happens that the um, extreme Islamic views have been the ones that have affected us the most as far as terrorism. But no, that's, that's where a lot of good people live in this country. Um, that out. Do you think can, uh, control can be handed back to the local authorities? Uh, what is your perception on the local government officials? Are they corrupt? For example, in, in Mexico, for for a long time, the government is just recently improving, but things are run by drug cartels there because government officials are being paid off. Is are things going to be similar to that in the Middle East? Well, the answer to the first question: Yes, we have to eventually hand over authority back to the local governments. Um, we don't have the money and we don't have the resources to do this for the for the rest of our lives. I mean, it's going to have to happen. Um, I don't know when that is. In, in Iraq, we already have. Uh, Afghanistan might take a little bit longer. Uh, as far as corruption of local officials goes, you, you have to understand corruption is a relative term. Um, what we think is corrupt in the United States isn't corrupt over in Iraq. It's just a good way to do business. Um, uh, so is there corruption? Yes, based on our definition of it. Um, okay, so, so what you're saying is what, what American might consider to be wrong or not honest might be common practice or, or normal over there. Uh, yeah, exactly. That's a great point. Okay, so, so our, our final point or final question is, do you think our, one of our big things over there is promoting democracy so that almost all or all people have a right in their government to say what happens? Do you think democracy can be achieved in Iraq and Afghanistan? And uh, what are your main concerns about that? Uh, I think it can in Iraq. Um, Iraq is more structured, not completely, but it's more structured like most industrialized countries. Um, it's going to take a little bit of time. It's not going to happen overnight. In fact, I don't think it's going to happen in 10 years. I think it's going to take a lot longer. It's going to take a change of the views of the people that live there. Af 